One of the coolest pieces of technology that you can get for today's vehicles is an OBD2 interface. Not only can you diagnose those occasional check engine lights and reset the error codes on your own, but this device also lets you modify the truck's software via Forescan and monitor PIDs, which are real-time engine metrics defined by your engine manufacturer. Monitoring engine PIDs allows you to determine all sorts of data about your engine and drivetrain while you're in motion. And it's important with a system as complicated and technologically advanced as the Power Boost engine is in your F-150. Now, I've already talked about applying this technology in previous videos, but I've got a game changer to show in this video. Everything I did before required a dedicated smartphone to create a display dashboard. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to monitor these performance parameters through your built-in 12-inch display monitor on your Ford F-150 Power Boost. Stay tuned and I'll walk you through it step-by-step. Step. Before I show you the installation steps, let me set the table for a minute and give you some background on PID monitoring. I've shown before in previous videos how powerful it is to be able to monitor items like state of charge your high voltage battery the amount of current going in or out of the battery the state of charge of the 12 volt battery engine temperature boost literally a thousand more potential details that you can measure and monitor based on what pids are available you can see in this video a screen capture of a dedicated smartphone set up on my field of view that allows me to monitor these pids on the go now while this is incredible and shows me a lot of information about how the engine and drivetrain is working, what I found out was that after a, a while, I stopped using this. It was just too much hassle to pull out the second phone, get it paired to the OBD2 adapter, initialize the correct dashboard, and get everything running. It's like a kid with a new toy on Christmas morning. By the afternoon, they've stopped playing with the toy and started playing with the box that it came in. I've always thought that it would be great to be able to bypass the need for a second phone and just have that information mirrored to our primary 12-inch display screen. And now, with the OBD Fusion app, we can do that, albeit in text fashion versus graphical. But what I found is that after owning this truck for three years, I'm more interested in frictionless access to the data that I need and less about the bells and whistles of a fancy dashboard. You can see on the data screen, you get the required PID information listed out instead of in graphic format. But because I can call this up on the main screen any time that I have Android Auto enabled, which is generally 100% of the time, I find this a lot more useful. Now, while I'm using Android Auto for this example, you can also do the same thing with just a little bit different look and feel with Apple CarPlay. Okay, let's show how to install and configure this function through OBD Fusion. Our first step is to install and configure OBD Fusion on our smartphone. Again, the example I'm gonna show you is gonna be through the Google Play Store and through an Android phone. This should be very similar to do on CarPlay. We're gonna open up our phone and go to the Play Store or App Store, whichever you have, and then choose search and then search on OBD Fusion. And as you start typing it in, you should get a result. So go ahead and select the OBD Fusion app. Now, in my case, I've already downloaded this. So all I have to do is open, but you may need to choose install. Now, if you want the app itself to download the app, it's going to cost you $4.99, which by itself isn't too bad. However, what you're going to eventually want to do is to go ahead and accept, and this is going to be an in-app purchase. So after you download the app and install it, you're going to be presented with a screen to ask you if you want specific PIDs. And I quite honestly can't remember exactly where this was presented to me. It's one of those things where it's, it's a very natural thing in the way that they present the upsell for these PIDs. But what you can do is you can just get the app to begin with, and include some very simple display PIDs like engine temperature to get started and help you decide if you want to commit the extra bucks for the custom PIDs, which I think once you see this in action, you're going to want 
the extra PIDs, especially if you have a complex vehicle, like a power boost where you really do want to monitor your high voltage battery. Now that we've installed the app, we're gonna open it up. Now before, what we would choose is dashboards. If we chose dashboards on this device, then we would predefine a dashboard which we'd use on a phone. We're not gonna do that here. So instead, we're gonna to go to settings. Now in settings, there's a lot of setup that we'll have to do, actually not that bad. So communications, when you get a dongle, in this case, I recommend the OBD Link MX Plus. We will put a link in the description below on how you can get access to one of these. It is the very best dongle that you can use for this. So communications, you'll set up the Bluetooth pairing. A lot of these applications, the general navigation, appearance, units, all these other settings we don't really need. Where we need to go into is Android Auto. This is the magic. This is where we configure screens. It's either gonna be PIDs or trip. So if I choose PIDs, you can see that these are the PIDs that I've defined to show on my screen. The very first five are gonna be on the front screen. It's very important that you not overpopulate PIDs. You can, but you're gonna see the first five first. Now, as you drill into some of these PIDs, if we go to add up in the upper right-hand corner, this is where we can add different PIDs and we can just go crazy with these, especially the Ford specific ones, which are the second one down. This is where we have a lot of the detail and that's what the extra 15 bucks buys you is access to all these customized PIDs for the Ford. So they're not just specific to that. So body control module, you're gonna get into battery charging metrics with a high voltage hybrid system. That's all under the Ford PIDs. So experiment with these, add them and see if they provide any utility to you while you're traveling. So you can see some of the ones that I've added here. So if we back out of that, we can also go to the trip, choose the trip and you can see the PIDs for the trip, which are fairly standard like duration and trip fuel and economy and things like that. So nothing, nothing crazy there. Okay, if we back out again, if you're setting this up for the first time, you wanna set up a new adapter. And then here is where you're going to define your OBD Link MX Plus, which again is what I recommend for this application. Okay, let's put this all together and show you how I view PIDs in Android Auto. I'm just gonna take you for a drive around the block. First thing to do is open up Android Auto. Now, if you've already installed OBD Fusion, you can either get it from the grid or if you've got it set to your favorites, it'll be on that bar. So I'm gonna select OBD Fusion. OBD Fusion's gonna come up under the apps here. And the first thing I need to do is once OBD Fusion comes up, I need to enable it by pairing with the Bluetooth adapter. So you'll see it's connecting. And then once you see the minus, it's connected. So I'm gonna select PIDs. Here are the first initial five PIDs that I can bring up on the list. I can also go back and look at trip. So there's certain trip data there. And you can also search for DTCs trouble codes. So you can read trouble codes, go ahead and select that. And then there's no trouble codes here, thumbs up. So we're gonna go back to selecting PIDs. And we're gonna go for a little drive here. Now I do have more PIDs than that. If I scroll down, I can see more, but these are the first five that I want to show and focus on. Now, as we put the truck into gear and start to move, let me explain what these PIDs do. The very first one up at the top is engine coolant temperature. This is for the internal combustion engine. That should be self-explanatory. PIDs three and four are the engine power and engine torque. Again, these are specific to the internal combustion engine. If it's turning, if it's firing, you'll see positive numbers from this. If it shuts down and lets the electric motor, or if it's just coasting, you'll see zero numbers from these PIDs. The two remaining PIDs are battery pack state of charge. This is what it sounds like. This is for the high voltage battery, the state of charge. This should go anywhere from maybe 38% up to about a maximum of 70%. And then down at the bottom, the hybrid EV battery power, 
this shows the actual energy either coming into the battery, which is going to be a negative number, or the power coming out of the motor, which is going to be a positive number. So positive current going into the motor shows drive from it. Negative current into the battery and out of the motor is going to show as a negative number. So you'll be able to see when I'm charging versus when the battery is actually driving the motor. The two can't happen at once. You can't be charging and driving the truck forward with the motor at the same time. So it's going to be exclusive to each other. So you can see in this case right now, the, the motor is acting as a charging unit as I'm stepping on the brakes. So there's actually current going into the battery. And then as I turn this corner, I'm going to be going up a hill. I apologize for the lack of stability on this. It's tough to, to drive and hold the camera steady at the same time. But as I drive up this hill, this is going uphill, it's going to not only take everything that the engine power, engine torque, so I've got the internal combustion engine spinning, and there's also power coming out of the battery, so you'll see the battery pack state of charge start to drop, and then the hybrid EV battery power is a very positive number because the motor's accepting current and it's driving forward. Now I'm getting up to a very flat spot and I'm coasting a little bit. So it's recharging the battery. There's actually current coming out of the motor generator and into the battery. So I'm coming up to another intersection. What I want you to do is to watch the PID down at the bottom, the hybrid EV battery power. I'm driving it and now it's turning into a generator. It's charging the battery up as I'm starting to slow down, step on the brakes, and then the motor generator turns into a generator and energy goes back into the battery. Now, as I come up to the intersection, I'm gonna turn the corner and the camera's gonna go flying here. But basically, I'm gonna start by going into um, hybrid mode. So it's gonna be driving the truck with just the battery only. And then as I turn the corner and come up the street here, we're going to be, uh, the engine is not spinning. The electric motor is actually driving the truck at this point. Now the engine kicks in and I've got both hybrid EV power as well as engine power. The engine shuts off. And now as I'm coasting down the hill, I'm recharging the battery again. It's kind of cool watching this happen, and it makes you understand how the truck actually operates, especially the electric portion of it on that sort of trade-off between whether the motor generator is acting to propel the, the truck forward or it's acting as a generator and storing energy into the battery. Just some final thoughts before I wrap things up. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. Now, what I've always found is that some of the best solutions end up being the simplest ones. So while it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the standalone solution with all the, the, the graphic elements on it, I find it just as useful, if not more useful, because it's always there. I can always bring it up, which to me uh, is the essence of value. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to write some software that takes the PIDs, adds graphic elements to them, and then allows you to mirror them on your Android Auto or CarPlay screen. Great. It's not there today, but I'm sure it will be at some point somewhere down the road. But in the meantime, I'm going to be perfectly happy watching these PIDs through this particular screen. All right. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.